Hi everybody, you're very welcome with us here today. Um, I hope you're all actually enjoying the sunshine. It's great to look out the window and see a little bit of sun. It's very welcome. My guest today is Sarah Jane. Um, and I think it's a topic that we're going to talk about that really most people can relate to. You know, it's a topic that we all talk about um, and it's sleep. But we're going to look at it from a different angle today and actually investigate, okay, does sleep impact your confidence? How does it impact your confidence? And if it does, well, what can we actually do to overcome this? So, Sarah Jane, you're very welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me, Sharon. Thank you very, very much. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Well, look, first things first, like sleep. OK, it's something we all all talk about. But what actually is the impact of not having enough sleep? So what does the next day look like after we don't have enough sleep? Of sleep is the root of overall wellness. I mean, whenever clients come to me for any issue whatsoever, I always ask them how their sleep is because it impacts us so much in our energy levels, our brain fog, and we're doubting ourselves, and then that would then uh, go into our confidence levels. It's just it's it's the overall root of making sure that your sleep is top notch so that you can feel the best that you can and tackle each day to the best of your abilities and through your, your full potential. Okay. And is it from one night's bad sleep? Is it maybe, I don't know, you know, some people say like they're a light sleeper, they're a bad sleeper, or is it just built up over time? I think it's more, um, it can be chronic sleep. Like, I mean, one night, one night's bad sleep, you know, you can nearly catch up the next day. You know, it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's normal. It's, we're not, we're not expected to have every single night uh, as a well-rested night's sleep, right? That's, it's pretty normal. But I mean, when you are um, constantly lacking in sleep, then it's just that the next day you just feel constantly lethargic and hard to focus on things and even like reaching for, energy fixers like like coffee or tea or caffeine or whatever yeah. those kind of things and if you're if you're constantly feeling tired then you know then that you are not getting enough rest most of the time so it's not about having it all of the time it's about having it most of the time uh, okay so you don't need to feel guilty if overall you're doing well but you just have you know that one crazy night out okay and is there a certain amount you know so we always hear like some people can live on four hours sleep some people can live six mm -hmm. eight hours sleep is mm -hmm. it different for everybody or is there some like what's the base amount that's a good amount to get it's a, ideally it's seven eight nine hours and a lot of people okay. go and function on six hours sleep like there was a study done where they um they looked at three groups of people group that got four hours sleep and a group that got eight hours sleep and a group that got six hours sleep and their performance levels. Now, obviously, the people who got the four hours sleep performed much less than the people who got the eight hours sleep who performed really, really well. However, it was the people who thought that they uh, that got six hours sleep. They thought they performed well. But when compared to the eight hours, they didn't. So people, um, oh. they feel that like, you know, they underrate the importance of sleep, you know, because because we are so, so busy in our general and in our day to day. You know, we've got lots and lots of things to go on between work, kids and whatever. They just don't regard sleep as important. And I'd rather stay up that extra hour to get some downtime when really your sleep is your optimal downtime. So ideally, your best function okay. is how you feel. And that is I know myself personally, seven hours and I get seven hours. That's my priority. And, and I feel much, much better. If, even if I get six hours, I, I can feel the difference in that hour. And do you know what you say is so true? Because um, that is like, I know I'd be an absolute devil for doing it and staying up later because I'm finishing, I'm sending a few emails, whatever it is, I'm finishing work. I might even be doing a bit of research. Um, and I keep thinking, you know, if I get this done and I'm not prioritizing that maybe hour, two hours, even sleep that I'm missing. And I'm probably then the next day actually getting a lot less done. Yeah. So whereas I think I'm getting ahead of myself the night before, I'm actually just kidding myself, really, aren't I? Absolutely. I mean, it's like, um, you know, charging your phone. You're you're running on you're running on a fifty percent battery if you don't have if you don't have your 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 batteries recharged in your sleep and a lot of people who are doing their work like the night before thinking I'm going to catch up the next day yeah. their mind their minds aren't clear and 
they're the things that they do the next day are less productive than than night before even though they think in advance oh I'll, I'll prepare this. I'll do my to-do list before yeah. I go to bed. That is the worst thing that you could do because your mind then is not switching off properly when you are going to sleep. Like you're, you're literally activating your mind, thinking about what am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do the next day? Okay. So the best thing to do for your, for your to-do list or planning in advance is actually do your to-do list at the end of your working day. So at the end of your shift and then you have your dinner or watch tv or whatever not yeah. before you go to bed because if you go to bed and i you... always do it before i go to bed always because in my head then i think i'm planned and i'm ready for the next day but yeah it makes sense and then all of a sudden into thinking mode and i'm thinking about the next day okay yeah. and is this something that like we always had like i can't remember a time of not being tired right so this wasn't just when my kids came along and is it just we get into bad habits over time or but yeah it, it, the bad habits over time um things that like we've we've learned some people nearly think wearing being busy all the time and overthinking like a badge of honor when really if we prioritize our rest we will get everything done much better as i've, I've, I've said that a few times it is down to the routine that you have and just slipping into that and just not regarding sleep as a priority. If you flip your mindset and say, my rest is the most important thing, because if you're okay. not rest, it's like, for example, mothers, you don't, you, you're constantly tired and not being, if you're well, uh, well rested, you'd be able to focus on looking after the kids or focus on looking after your job, uh, whatever. I mean, that's, that's the number one priority with that. And it just, it's as society has gotten busier over, the last god no last generation let's talk like 10 20 years yeah you know it's just the way society has evolved because we're always on the go we always have our smartphones on and we're always looking for the next thing to watch on netflix that keeps our minds active so even if we are going to sleep we're not getting fully well rested because our minds themselves are not switching okay. off completely okay so we nearly um, need so a routine just over time ahead. really so we need a routine then nearly even ahead. So it's not good enough to go, I'm going to bed for seven hours. We nearly need a routine to kind of go into that, is it? Yeah, yeah. The, the sleep, sleep ritual, sleep routine is is ideal just to get all the physical external circumstances out of the way. So someone comes to me with a sleep issue, I, I, I ask them, okay, are you actually giving yourself extra time? Are you scheduling more time than you need to sleep? So now I'm going to get, get into bed exactly seven hours before I'm supposed to get up, give yourself an hour before that, you know? Um, the room temperature, for example, that is a really, really big thing with the room temperature. I didn't realize it myself. We have a, um, we have a, a, a mobile home down down Wexford, and I, yeah. I get the best night's sleep down there because it's so cold at night. Believe it or not, because you're under the I've bed, that, you're under, yeah. under the duvet, and and you're nice and cold, toasty. But like the room itself is quite cold, and you get the best night's sleep ever. It helps your body get right down into really, really, really deep sleep. So it's so, those so like sleep rituals, sleep habits, uh, uh, sleep habits. Um, the likes of you know phones and tablets and all that we've we, i'm sure many people have heard that before no phones no tv or, but some people really like to have something to listen to when they're going to sleep i yeah. just ask them not to look listen to something that's interesting that's going to have their minds thinking or okay. look for the next bit of information you know like like a podcast for example so don't listen for to our to podcast going to sleep no, <laughs> do not listen to your podcast going to sleep like i you could you could listen to anything like meditation or hypnosis or whatever anything on YouTube. Yeah, and, uh, this is the thing I, I listen found to. some great things on YouTube before. Actually, just I just googled like guided, um, guided meditation. And it's just yeah. someone talking with music in the background. But I like that. I found it helped me just just it's just it's, maybe exactly to stop the overthinking to stop thinking about what you've what you've done what you have to do tomorrow stop thinking about things that are in the past you're literally just your mind is just focusing on that so it's not focusing inwards and then you can then you can okay. you can drift off but um you know just turn turn the phone over if you don't have the the youtube uh, the page youtube and where you can turn it off the screen i just flip the phone over so i don't get the light that's coming into me okay 
Okay. And then what about, are there other reasons that will keep us awake? So, okay, we know if we have young children, that's going to keep us awake, right? So that's a given. Um, and then the screens will keep us awake. But what about, is there things that we're doing during the day that's actually probably affecting our sleep at night time as well then? Well, I suppose you could think about maybe your caffeine intake that, you know, straight away, if you're having tea or coffee, like a couple of hours before you're going to sleep. I know I try and stop um, any sort of caffeine intake like by six o'clock, 6 p.m., 6, 7 p.m. I'm making sure that, you know, that's out of my system before I go to sleep as well. Eating before bed is a big thing um, because your body is actually still digesting the food while you're lying down. And that's not great either, especially anyone who's got acid reflux. They've been told that they have to stay upright if they're if they're okay. um if they're eating those things and i know sometimes we like we like to have like a little few munchies in the evening time but just not right before bed you know and something that's quite light that will won't take too much to digest okay 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 and then if we're taking our seven hours sleep what about when it gets to the weekend because i know this is something i heard before and i really struggled with the thought of this of you know, kind of keeping your same routine on the weekend that you have on the weekday. And I love to have an extra hour or two sleep on the weekend. Like that's my real, real treat. So can we do that or what should we be doing? Well, ideally, yes, you should be waking up at the same time every day, going to bed at the same time every night. But this is about most of the time, not all of the time. Yeah. Okay. Now, what I like, I find because I have a regular sleep pattern in place, I am waking up at the same time on the weekends anyway, regardless of, you know, now, unless unless we had like a social evening the night before, which meant okay, that okay. I was awake. So you're not superhuman. You know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but the lions, like, I mean, and the extra half hour is is fine, but you can still have your lie in awake. You know, you wake up and you can relax in the bed for as your as your lie in as your extra rest. I love that. I actually think that is one of the best ideas that I've ever heard because no, I no, I really love that because to me, I suppose I like the extra because it's 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 my time, right? But as you said, I could be lying there and I could be listening to a podcast. Mm -hmm. and it's still my time um, yeah. and I'm not making myself feel groggy and you're still That's you're brilliant. still relaxed and you, you, it's not like your the alarm has to get out go off at seven eight o'clock on, on a Saturday morning you know you will find that if you're if you're going to bed at a certain time all every night your 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 sleep patterns will naturally wake you up even maybe five minutes before an alarm goes off but you're not jolting yourself up and then like putting your body into some sort of shock um and then having that extra time in bed when you wake up for yourself like it just contributes to your rest and you will have just a fabulous day because sleep i oh. i tell i it's the when i started sleeping properly it completely changed my life so what does that look like actually what does it look like when you have sleep resolved you're just in an overall better mood you can like any sort of problems that come in front of you you know like i can't i can't give an exact example but you know for any problems that come face you we all face problems every day something happens yeah. and normally if we are really tired and groggy our uh, it's called cognitive assessment right so whenever we face with a problem our mind decides can do we have the resources to deal with this all right and there's three phases if we can't if we can grant if we've had sleep because it's great resource most of the time we can sort these problems no problem at all because we have that cognitive function okay. but if we can't your mind goes into shutdown meltdown or breakdown and that is because of uh, primarily because we don't feel like we have the resources to deal with it but when we have sleep, we we're giving ourselves a fighting chance, pretty much. With that, <laughs> yeah. um, it's like it, it's it. I said it. It's completely. I used to go from from a point where I was always always busy, and I wore this badge of honor where I was working late, doing loads and loads of things, and I kept telling people how busy I was and how tired I was and how exhausted I was because I was so so busy, and now. The fact that I manage myself to to make sleep a priority, I'm feeling much more confident in myself being able to to deal with situations, to be able to even do meaning meaningful tasks 
it's just your day itself just runs much much better and it I can also see it, I can see the excitement you know the energy even as you talk about it it's, yeah it's 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 just amazing and I know there's so many people out there who are struggling to sleep and 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 they don't they they don't either they either don't regard it as a problem or they think it's something that they can't fix and they can you know it's 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 Unless unless even, a doctor has said there's something medically wrong here, why why it's not happening? Okay. Most people can resolve these. It's usually down to their sleep rituals, to sleep habits, and not preparing to go to bed. Now, I'm not saying that I meditate every night or anything like that. I just have a set time that I go to bed, and I, and and I naturally wake up in the morning, you know, and it's, it just happens to be the time that my working day starts because I've gotten into that routine. It happens, say, when you get into that, um, it's within about two or three weeks really like you know you get get into that sort of routine you can okay. feel the not effect an overnight thing. yeah so no you no, gotta no. you set up a routine now you're not going to be feeling amazing within one or two days you don't know, stick with it it will take a bit of time but I mean two three weeks that's that's not a lot of time you know there's, there's habits that can take a, an awful lot longer to start feeling the benefits from absolutely absolutely like like even even one night sleep one night good sleep you'll feel much better the next day but to make it a habit with that routine you'll find it um overall in a couple of weeks time how much better you're feeling in yourself and so okay. that's 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 the priority as well you know we feel well we feel good in ourselves everything else will fall into place yeah it, but it's making that a priority i think it's like you said it's making sleep a priority and not wearing the busy badge a priority. And it's making ourselves a priority and not thinking, you know what, I'll just spend these two, three hours doing everything else that I need to do for everyone else instead of saying actually. And then kidding ourselves the next day about what we're getting done when we're not really. And Louise is on today and she's just said um, she loves that as well to write down the to-do list at the end of the day. Karen is saying she really needs to stop looking at the phone in bed and definitely needs a better sleep pattern. And what about, because I know there's lots of people at the moment, um, because everybody's working from home, right? And this is brand new for so many people. You know, whereas you went to work, you left there and you came home. Now you're at home with work. You know, there are some people that are working evenings. There's sometimes a feel that if you see other people working emails or sending you emails, you need to respond. So, you know, we're wearing that busyness badge a little bit more and mm -hmm. um, and maybe you know they've kind of followed the tips like you said they have sleep routine you know they're kind of cutting out the caffeine but they're still not getting into that deep sleep is there something else that can be done they're still not getting into that deep sleep um due to i just i just want to make sure that i'm clearly answering the question due to the fact that they are working from home and they're finding it a little bit more difficult to switch or off maybe in general that they're just not they've kind of tried i suppose i'm just conscious that there's more of us um our sleep was is more impacted at the moment because we're more busy and i'm just wondering you know if they kind of follow the sleep routine and um, i know there's other ways as well that you're kind of helping your clients get mm -hmm. a better sleep and um, that you know if they've tried these kind of tips and it's just not working that okay there is still hope that's not the be all and end all well it's it's it can be you can you can remind yourself when you're going to sleep like a bit like the, if people are there's there's a couple of people with their sleep struggles and um, um, their main struggles is one is actually falling asleep right so that's that's when the mind is on overdrive trying to uh, think of all these things that are that, that have to be done tomorrow or whatever then there's other people who are finding it hard to stay asleep and that's where they wake up in the middle of the night, not just to go to the loo, because like some people that happens anyway. So you just reduce reduce your uh, your fluid intake and it can be a habit okay. as well. But then there's people who wake up, they think who who are getting a full night's sleep and then they're still tired. And that is because there is a part of the mind that's still not switching off. So for that, okay. what what I what I recommend is when you're going to bed, imagine your mind itself is like a um, a tower, right? So a, t a building block, an office block, possibly any sort of a building that has windows and has lights in the windows. Okay. When when you're get when it's bedtime and you're you're getting in sleep and you're trying to think of what of everything else, just think about this, right? The the tower, the top floor of the tower is your conscious mind. And at the end of your day, end of your waking day, the end of the work day, the top floor, all the lights go off because you're consciously 
going to go unconscious or subconscious. Now, all the other little lights in the building are supposed to go off when the top floor goes off. That's the cue. End of day, when the top, light, top floor goes off, all the others are supposed to go off. When someone who is feels like they are sleeping but are not are not feeling rested, that is because there is one or two of those lights on the bottom floors of the buildings that are still on. So okay. when you're going to sleep, visualize or imagine that tower block and the top floor going off, and then all the other little lights in the building are going to go off and follow suit because that will subconsciously tell your mind that it's time for everyone to go sleep. There's only one person. That. There's only one person in the office block that's still awake because you have some people who might be worried about, you know, well, I need to wake up for, I need to wake up for my child. For example, my yeah. child needs to, needs to get up um, or I need to, they might, they might feel a bit nervous for, for whatever reason. And they're, they're still not getting right rest and sleep. There's one person in the office building and that's the night watchman. And they're, they're patrolling the car park and the building at night time to make sure that everything is safe. And their job at night is to only wake up if there's an emergency. You know, if, they, if, there's, if there's a sound that's not, um, you know, that's not normal, you know. Okay, and, and, okay. And otherwise, all the other parts of the mind then can then rest knowing that the night watchman is looking out for them. To go to sleep. okay so, i love that possibly it possibly helps like i i know what my clients when i work with them and they come to me for sleep problems we focus on that because a lot of them are finding that they are tired another one um for those who are finding that they find it hard to go to sleep like okay they're lying awake if they have over um overthinking um, yeah, clients I've spoken to have found I'm thinking about stuff from 20 years ago that's not even relevant. Like you know what 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 I said to this person 20 years ago, and I'm sure I don't even talk to them anymore, and I don't know why yeah. that's coming into my mind. Like like all these like internal dialogues. It is your mind for for some strange reason, but they do it, trying to solve a puzzle that can't be solved. So you know, like a jigsaw. Yeah, it's got, it's got a missing piece. So when your mind is on overdrive for particularly stuff that's happened in the past, right? I'll, I'll, t I'll talk about the stuff that's happening now, but stuff that's happened in the past, it's your, your mind is trying to find that missing piece to get the answer to that resolution, like to that situation. Okay. When your mind really just needs to know that everything that we learned or we needed to learn was learned at the time. And there's nothing new to learn from it. Why? Why will we try and put a jigsaw together with a with a full miss with a missing piece when we know that there's no nothing else to get? We can't find any more pieces. So that's what people have, are thinking about in the past. When so if you say all, your mind, then you just say it's solved. Let it go, like. Um, it's it, not that not that it's necessarily solved. It's that we won't we won't find the solution. We've learned everything that we've learned. At okay. The time. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So, so everything there's nothing new to learn for here from this from revisiting this over and over and over again so let's just focus forward on problems that we can solve or puzzles that we can solve when we have all of the pieces okay okay so you switch so then do you switch your mind off that and start thinking about something else or just say to your mind no that's just, it we've learned everything we need that, that's it we've learned everything that we need to learn we've learned everything that we need to learn and then and then your mind okay that's fine, right? Then it stops. <laughs> just, okay. I can't explain it. To you. I can't. I can't explain yeah. it to you within. But the it's time just frame. having all of these tools, nearly. You know, they're not even yeah. tips. Or, you know, it's it, it's tools. It's just different tools to help us. Okay, so then you said, and then if it's something that's current, and if it's something that's it, that if it's something that is current, it is about reminding what the most important job of the day is. So whatever you have to do tomorrow whatever you have to do next week, whatever you have to do in two or three weeks time, you are not going to solve that or get that sorted right now when you're trying to go to sleep. The most yeah. important job for you to focus on is to get a good restful night's sleep and not be thinking about all the other things that you have to do. Now, there was something else I was literally going to say along that, hang on, after having a little bit, a bit of a, a brain um, thing. Oh yeah, that's what I meant to say. All right. Um so you're getting a, a most important job of the day is to get a good restful night's sleep, yeah. right? However, we can overthink that as well. 
right? So you can obviously get like okay. pressured over, oh my God, I have to go sleep. I really, really have to go sleep. And now I'm not sleeping. Ah, and that, and that's that's what can really annoy us sometimes. There's when so many people kind of, listening to this now going, that is so me. That is so yeah. me. I completely get it. Yeah, you're I, not alone. I, I, tossing and turn and, and just getting so yeah. frustrated over themselves at the fact that they are not actually going to sleep. What you do then is say, I am resting. This is what I'm doing. At least I am resting. And that takes the subconscious pressure of having to fall asleep, which okay. will lead then to you naturally drifting off. I am at rest. Okay. So it doesn't matter if I go sleep in the next five or 10 minutes, I'm still resting. And then your I'm body, as you say, will just ultimately fall asleep. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. It's the same when you wake and up in the middle of the night, like with that. Oh, yeah. So okay. So when you wake up in the middle of the night, use the same thing. Yeah, use the same thing. If I, if you're, you're, oh God, I'm after, I have to be up in three hours for work. I have to go back to sleep. I'm resting. At least I'm resting now, and I know that that because I'm resting and not focusing on anything else, I will still feel ha feel more energy than having such a, a huge lack of sleep. And it just it just takes the pressure off having to go back to into a deep sleep. Yeah, it is. I, I can I can actually feel that nearly even taking the pressure off me if I'm trying to get asleep. You know, mm. I can just feel that it's just a different tool to use. And and then what about hypnotherapy? I know you mentioned before that hypnotherapy as well. You use that with your clients with sleep. Yeah. How yeah, does that work? Well, it, it's with the um, the hypnosis side that I work with people. It's, a, it's called the control system. It was de developed by a man called Tim Box. If anyone was feeling um, anxious or I suffer with anxiety, he's got an excellent TED talk on YouTube. Tim Box, TED talk. Look it up. It is really, okay. really good. Let me put that in the comments. So Tim Box. Yeah. Box, yeah. Tim Box, uh, TED talk. Okay. And it's a it's great for um for uh, an understanding of anxiety. He trained me to uh, teach people how to change almost anything about how they think, feel, or behave. So what I do is use the control system, which is an understanding of hypnosis, to access those parts of the mind where someone's saying to me, "Well, I know all that. I mean, logically, like that's that's I know that, but I still can't yeah. help but feel, or I can't help but feel." the way I feel I can't control that I can't change that that's when they come to me and and we we induce subconscious dominance which I don't have time to talk about but I get into the most powerful parts of their mind and okay. get the upgrade the old patterns of thought so it's not just about people who think that they're broken it's about people who think that they're that they they just need to change their thinking um and upgrade it same way that you would go and upgrade a mobile phone Okay. Like, okay. You know, no, no, no one's using, no one's using an L Nokia 3310 like today, like because they're, they, they become redundant. They're, they're no longer useful for our, for our lifestyle. Now. So things change over time, but sometimes most parts of our mind are actually still back there from when we originally learned it. And it's very, 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 it can be hard to upgrade without the help from someone like myself. OK, OK, but there is but the whole I suppose the point of what we're trying to say is, is there are different ways that people can try to tackle this, you know, so oh, don't yeah, kind that, of feel that there isn't anything that they can do. And don't just suffer with it because it's a huge, huge thing to suffer with, too. Yeah. I mean, if this is every solitary night, the next day must be really, really tough. Yeah. And, and I'm really if, if, if you're not sleeping well, it can really have um, an impact on your overall mental health as well. You just feel emotional and and just feel like you're not able to cope. So, I mean, there are there are ways to do it. I mean, there's plenty of practical ways. There, there are specific sleep coaches, you know, you could talk to your doctor or you could talk to someone like myself who could, you know, who could see if we could help that. You're not alone, there is help out there. I mean, everything that yeah. I've mentioned today is all very, very practical. Try it all out. And if you're still if you're still struggling with it, maybe a conversation one to one would be effective. Don't think that that it's something that cannot be resolved. There there is a solution out there, whether it's with me, whether it's with someone else. There is a solution out there. Everyone, everyone deserves to sleep well. That's yeah. the main. It's a basic thing. right, isn't Deserve it? When it. you think about it, oh, yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, and where can people well, find you? So you know, so people now that are dying <laughs> to be helped with this where is the best place 
for you? I mean, is it Facebook, Instagram, your website? Where would you send people, Sarah Jane? Um, I am pretty. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram. I've got two aspects of my business. My main website is nofilter.ie, so one website. Um, I've no filter fitness for for women, and then Mind Hack Wellbeing is the is is the other side with the with the hypnosis side of it. Uh, you can contact me on either one. Um, I'm mainly active on Instagram with No Filter Women's Fitness. Um, I'm on that. That's I have my notifications set on for that because there's so many social channels. You know, you kind of just try and stick to one or two of them. You know. I know. Um, I know. I know. I hear you. Um, and then she, what we'll do is we'll pop in the comments then after this as well and um, the links to your Facebook page. So then Thank that you. way people can just easily link along. And then you've been an absolute brilliant guest. Um, I, I've learned so much from you today that I'm actually I'm really going to try this week. Um, and I'm actually going to let you know next week Please how do. I'm getting on. Um, but I always ask each of my guests to leave one lasting tip for our audience. So what would be your lasting tip to share with us? I think I, I think I've shared all my gold nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> there's, so many that was brilliant. there's so there's so many of them. Um okay, one last tip. If everything else fails, close your eyes and imagine yourself in a perfect place. This place is absolutely perfect to you. It could be anywhere, it could be somewhere you've been before, it could be somewhere in your in your mind. The room, the lighting, the temperature, the ambience, everything is absolutely perfect. And you are in control of your own thoughts and emotions. Whenever you're feeling stressed, whenever you're feeling anxious, whenever you're feeling like you can't sleep, visit this perfect place in your mind and know that you can pass through this place into a restful night's sleep. I could talk about that for five more minutes, but, <laughs> but that's okay. the idea. The imagine, imagine, perfect. just imagine a perfect place, somewhere that is perfect to you to kind of rein back in and recharge your emotional batteries. Brilliant. And I think what I've learned the most of anything today is that we need to prioritize our sleep and actually make that the top of our to-do list <laughs> instead of you know just a thing that we just throw ourselves at the bed at the end of the day when we get a chance so um absolutely brilliant i've learned so so much from sarah jane and i'm going to be back on to you next week letting you know how everything went um, and we'll put your details in later on then so people can contact you too thanks sure. for joining me thank today you. you're a great guest thank you